Hi and welcome to the Orthodox Talk channel. My name is Very Reverend Ivan Chandra. Today I'd like to talk to you about a prominent saint to whom the Church gives so much attention and so much honor that the whole week of Great Lent has been dedicated to his honor, to his memory. And his name is Saint John Climacus or Saint John of the Ladder. St. John of the Ladder, or Climacus, while living as a hermit in the Sinai Peninsula, was recognized by the Church for his humility, for his wisdom, for his obedience, uh, and uh, his writing, the book, uh, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, has become a book that was read and was taught to many, many monks in the history of Christian Church. He himself lived in the 7th century, but his example inspired many people to follow Christ. So John the Ladder takes this very important, very specific way of putting his teaching into a pattern of 30 years of Lord's full age. He described it as a ladder consisting of 30 steps of spiritual perfection. It means that this book has 30 chapters. Each one of them is named after a very special step that needs to be taken by every Christian in order to reach heavenly kingdom. Before we go into the steps, which we need to know, of course, if you want to advance spiritually, if you want to grow spiritually, I'd like to say that this letter, this teaching of St. John, helps us to see how far we are from God yet how much we have to struggle yet to achieve the next level, the next step, to reach to the next step. Because when we have attained to the Lord's age by ascending them, those steps, then we become unstumbling. We become able to live with God forever. So Christ's Church, the Holy Orthodox Church, invites us on the fourth Sunday of Great Lent to look into our spiritual selves. We have to judge ourselves in order to see whether we have even started our ascension to God. This book of St. John, Climacus, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, is actually a book that combines the whole liturgical year, that helps us to bring together the pieces that we receive from church on every single service during the liturgical year. And that is done for us during Great Lent in order to help us to see how much we need, need to work, work hard on our salvation. We have to strive to go through this narrow gate with le which leads us to God narrow gates of our struggles, spiritual struggles, fighting with our saints, temptations, sinful desires, in order to reach heaven. When you start reading this book, at first you might decide that, whoa, wait a minute, wasn't this book written for monks? Isn't this book for ascetics? But uh, as we know, that each one of us has to be an ascetic. Ascetic uh, derives from, from Greek word which translates as an athlete. The one that, that repeats, that struggles, that does the work okay. hard. And in this, in this case, we all need to be ascetics. Because, as you remember, we need to go through the narrow gate, which, which leads to heaven. Narrow gate meaning that we have to look what specifically works for our salvation. However, we have a lot of help. First and foremost, we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is ready to give us His divine grace and help us on this ascetic struggle. We also have the saints, we, we have the lives of the saints that, that can show us how they made it to heaven. On our spir spiritual ascent, we need to remember one more thing though. On our ascent, if we stop, we might fall down. And if we stop developing spiritual selves, then we will have to start from the very bottom again. So every time we fall into sin, we, we can say that we have to start from the beginning. But the main thing is, God is ready to help us again and again and again, as many times as it is needed for us to achieve and to reach this ascension and to reach heaven. 
So what is needed, according to St. John Climacus, what is needed for us in order to be saved, in order to reach heavenly kingdom, in order to climb up, to ascend this spiritual ladder of divine ascent? As I previously said, there are 30 steps which we need to make in order to achieve heavenly kingdom. And these steps are made consistently with God's help. If we rely only on our own strength, we won't succeed. We always need God in our spiritual struggle. So our first step, according to St. John, is on renunciation of the world. One might say, well, I am married man or I am... Uh, I have a husband, or we live together as a husband and a wife, and how can we renounce this world? I have some, some work to do at home, home I, I need some chores to do. And uh, St. John Climacus actually was approached with this very question, and he answered that some people living carelessly in the world have asked me, these are the words of St. John, we have wives and are beset with social cares, and how can we lead the solitary life? I replied to them, Do all the good you can. Do not speak evil of anyone. Do not steal from anyone. Do not lie to anyone. Do not be arrogant towards anyone. Do not hate anyone. Do not be absent from the divine services. Be compassionate to the needy. Do not offend anyone. Do not wreck an another man's domestic happiness and be content with what your own wives can give you. If you behave in this way, you will not be far from the kingdom of heaven. So basically, this is the, the road map for every married couple. These words that we can still make it to heaven. Of course we, we can. Of course God wants us be here, there with him, together with him. And renunciation of the world for us means that whatever we have, we have to give thanks for it to God and understand that what I have, this is not only mine. This belongs to God as well. Then there are some more 29 steps. The main things that, that we need to look into uh, for people that live in the world, that are not monks, that, that have responsibilities, that need to go to work, that need to make money to pay their own bills, we need to understand that we must be frank with God. We cannot do things the way the world does it, in a sinful way. We have, all, we have to always rema remind ourselves and remember that only with God can we be saved. There are very special and important steps, for instance, on detachment from this world, on exile or pilgrimage. Exile meaning that, that wh wherever I am, I understand that the world belongs to God. And where, uh, wherever I find myself living or working, I have to understand that this work that I am doing has to be to the glory of my Lord and God. And then comes another step, let's say obedience, right? It's understood when you are a monk and you are in a monastery and you have to be obedient to your uh, Holy Father, to your abbot, and you have to understand that, that this is done to humble your, your will and to break your sinful will and to make your will work for your salvation. But how do we combine this obedience, a step, should we omit it if we live in the world? For every Christian, this step of obedience has a very unique meaning. This obedience is to be obedient not only to my, to my abbot, to my holy father. It's to be obedient to church, to church's decisions, to follow church's teaching, to follow whatever church's traditions are in our region. That's what obedience means for us people living in this sinful world. So the main thing for this fourth Sunday of Great Lent, or the main theme, I should say, for the fourth Sunday of Great Lent, is 
to remind us, to show us the beauty of God's kingdom and a possible way to get there, to reach that kingdom, to ascend to heaven, to ascend to the place where God wants us to be, right by Him. Of course, we need to work on our pride. We need to humble our pride. Of course, we need to learn how to pray. Of course, we need to be concerned of, of those people that are needy, that need our help. And all these steps, if you look into the book of St. John Climacus, all these steps will help us only then and only then when we put our free will into it. They cannot make us holy if we don't want to. They cannot make us repent if we decide not to. They cannot make us humble if we decide to be prideful. So we are invited on the fourth Sunday of Great Land to become athletes, athletes of God, athletes or ascetics that work diligently on their ascension to heaven. Thank you for staying to the end of the video. If you like it or if you think somebody would benefit from it, please share it with your friends and relatives. You can also record your reaction to this video. I hope you give it a thumb up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. God bless you. Peace be with you all.